Okay, so everybody, thank you for coming. And I'm very excited today to introduce to you uh, Lisette, who is being mentored by Marina and together with Judith. So Lisette is going to share with us about her calligraphy journey. She's going to talk about her background in architecture a little bit, right? And how it affects her um, in uh, how, how she brings that 3D uh, uh, thinking into her work. And then she's going to show us some sneak peeks. I just now had a glance at it and it was really very exciting. So over to you, Lisette. Hi, Dorothy. Tell us about your background, uh, your interest in calligraphy, how you got started from being a like, you know, an architect. And then how did you get into calligraphy and so forth? Yeah. Well, I have always been interested in calligraphy. Um, I haven't got the chance to to study calligraphy. Um, I began on 2017, I guess. Yes, it was 2017. Um, and I started uh, learning the classic calligraphy and just like a hobby. And then I um, met my uh, Claudia Terich and there, that's where I, I knew I wanted to do more with calligraphy. Um, you were saying that you met with Cloud Dietrich, right? And he's like this very well-known yes. um, elderly calligrapher. He's right now, what, 91, you were saying? 91 yes, he's, he's 91. Yes, he, he, he turned 91 this year. And he has more projects than, than any one of us. <laughs> he, keeps, he keeps working. He, he writes all day. Wow. Oh. So and then he he with his influence he wanted you to start a guild was that in um in uh, where you yes it, it was always uh, Claude's dream to have a guild here because he's um, an honorary member of Friends of Calligraphy so he's been living here for forty years and he always dreamt of of having a calligraphy guild here so. Uh, me and some friends um, under his guidance started planning and we started our calligraphy guild. It's called Calligrafica um, back in 2019, just before the pandemic. And we had our first event, it was um, presential. And um, then on 2020, uh, on the pandemic, we, we made it online and we did it also this year. And it's great because we had um, people from, out, uh, from outside of Peru, people from all over the world, you know, how we're doing this. Um, and we invite people to do demonstrations or workshops and it, it's been great. It's been great uh, hosting it and participating on it. We're trying to work for our, our community here in Peru. So Marina was one of the teachers. Am I yes, right? Marina, <laughs> Marina's been two years in a row. Yay. Yeah, it's an honor to participate in something like, like that because I know that's so much work behind, uh, behind organizing and hosting uh, Calligraphy Society. I live in Argentina and we have been doing calligraphy since 2007. No, I'm, 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 no, we started calligraphy in 1997. Wow. We never made a, we never made a, we could never made a guild. No way. It was so much work. We, we couldn't teach and spread the word about calligraphy and hold a, and, and be able to organize a, uh, a community, it was impossible. Actually, we were six people, which were called um, Southern Cross Calligraphers, and we just put it there, outside there. We, we tried to make it visible, and then we split because we were turning nuts, doing so much work. Wow, wow. So yes, it's, it's I, a lot I, of work. You know, yeah, I know what yeah. you you are doing. It's like yes, it's a lot of work, and, and we are a very a very great group. 
We are like seven people, I think. Um, we all work hard. We have the same ideals and we want the same thing for, for our community here in Peru. So you were saying that the community, is it, um, how, how, how large is the community where you are? People in, in calligraphy or? Well, it's, it's really little. We have like 10 associates and yes, yes, only only 10 people are associated, but we um, do a lot of work uh, for schools. Um, we also had a, a very pretty project. We went to a, a juvenile center that uh, for girls that are private of her liberty. Um, we did a workshop there uh, on January, February, just before the pandemic. It was a, a very a very hard but gratifying experience. Yeah. It was very, very nice Wonderful. sharing with people that, with girls that are, they were girls from like 12 to 18 years. And they, they were locked. It was very, very, a very nice experience. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very uh, encouraged to, you know, to see the set that you are actually, you are helping to pioneer in a way, like you're at the forefront, you're breaking new ground in Peru for calligraphy. Would it be right to say that? Yes, I guess. I guess we are, we, I have met people, uh, very good people. Uh, Rosa uh, Marina knows Rosa. She's the president. We have Mariana. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Juan Luis Gargurevich. Yes. Uh, uh, you, maybe we, you can take a look at uh, the page of Calligrafica. It's uh, yes. calligrafica.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can find information there. Okay. Yeah. So together with your, your, your uh, colleagues, you are actually doing uh, a lot to try to make calligraphy uh, known. So Ma Marina has done it for since 97. So now it's 2021. <laughs> You're at the beginning, many years, many years ahead, but now you have friends, right? You have uh, people to support you and rally behind. That's great. Maybe you want to talk about how, uh, you know, in your, in your uh, calligraphy work, you try to incorporate you know, your architectural training or thinking? Oh, yes. Well, I started learning um, uh, calligraphy and, and try to do everything perfect, you know. <laughs> but um, when the pandemic started, uh, well, just before the pandemic, I started with a project with, you know, cut letters, the ones that we exhibited last year. Uh, trying to experiment because um, I always like to work with light and shadow. And I'm going to turn my camera, my document camera. Let me, let me show you. So this is after you attended Marina's uh, empty space? No, this is before. This okay. is before. Okay. This is before. I did, the, I did this. I tried to work with a mock-up. Progress. Yes, progress. And then I and then I created a whole a whole alphabet. You no, know, working with light and shadow. You can see it here. This was my first attempt with doing something in 3D. So you and then I attended. Was yes. that a collection of all the Okay. Yes, this is the alphabet, each letter. Then I photograph it. Nice. You know, each letter separately. And then I photograph it and, and made, um, and, and write things, but digitally. Okay. Right? And then I took Marina's um, workshop and I came up with the idea of making a, a diorama, uh, experimenting with uh, the counterform of the letters. I made this book. 
it, this was my project for Marina's for Marina's workshop. Let's see, here you go. You have a first layer that is the lines between the letters. A second layer that are the letters, the alphabet. A third layer that you can see better here, the alphabet with some counterforms and field and the background. So this is from the empty space workshop. Yes, this was my, my final project. This was the one that I saw and convinced me to take Marina's class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you. <laughs> it's really true. The moment I saw this, I'm like, oh my god, I, I need to take this class. It's amazing work. I was like, <laughs> Marina, she was yes, because you love because you love paper cutting too. <laughs> yes, my mind was blown. And I was, I was like, wow. And I was telling Dorothy, I'm not a, a paper cutter, so <laughs> if they are thinking, I will teach something about paper cutting. They have to teach me. And actually, because they did. Because they said it was the one that suggested for the, the, the tools, the proper tools for the discipline. So uh, I asked her, and she took a wonderful picture and did all the links. And then everybody in the class was aware of which were the proper tools for paper cutting. And it's still being like my PDF for specific tools for paper cutting. So everybody has it around the world, these sets. Uh, suggestions. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So I, I'm very interested to see actually that because Marina, your works were so, you know, it's so beautiful how you deconstruct the letters, then you look at the uh, the counter spaces, uh, and then you look for the shapes, right? And and and, and you you make the, the, the art out of that negative space. And then what Lisette did with it was like mind blowing because she formulated those into a structural, I mean, she did it with the layers and the structural objects. So when you saw it, Marina, were you very impressed? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was. Your, your well, it was translate, yeah, sorry. I, 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 I have the fortune of having wonderful students all over the world and, and some people are really way better than me. I, I just got an idea, but they do miracles with my, with my idea. And, but that was the very first time I had someone that interpret the whole story about the empty space on paper cutting. Yeah. So now she's on my lecture. So, because part of my lectures is the work of my students. Wonderful. Because I can have an approach to a theme, like the empty space, but each person has its own point of view and comes with their own background. So that makes, that enriches the theme. So uh, she was the one who was, uh, who was, who had a strong background on paper cutting. So she could put those ideas into paper cutting. Uh, but actually um, that's what happened. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, I wanted, sorry Dorothy. I it's wanted to show you how, how the work started. Okay. It was like this. Nice. Yes. It was like this, all the exercises. Oh. And this is part of the of the book. I decided to cut this out. <laughs> I see. Oh, and I see. It, this was supposed to be the final project, a color, a colorful project. <laughs> and then I went for the paper cutting. Nice. I succeeded. Okay. So these are your studies when you were looking at the shapes and deciding which ones to, to cut. Wow, so yes. much work. Wonderful. So Marina, the process she followed, but then the end product was different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so wonderful. Judith, you're very happy. You want to share <laughs> what is your take on this? Oh, because I think the, the first time I saw that, I, I just, for the longest time, I've been working with like graphic design, paper cuts, and things all separately. So when I first saw that, the first thing was, oh, I didn't realize that calligraphy could be something so experimental and so artistic. I didn't know that it could combine so both so well. So when she did the paper cuts, I went, that was on during the last exhibition, the Grateful exhibition, and she had a mini sharing. And when when I just saw that, I'm like, okay, I will take this course the moment I can. <laughs> <laughs> and then during the course, I was just thinking, oh, wow, there's so many things that I didn't 
I have been taught in graphic design white space, all these things separately, but I've never thought of implementing it together in this way. So the different exercises then after that, um, I just grew more and more excited and a lot of the things I was doing is, it just kind of makes sense. It, at that point, I think it was a series of steps that led me to Marina's work as well. And then after that, I went back to see my Lissette's work. I just thought, wow, the way, the more I learned about it, the more I appreciated how simple her things seemed, but they're so clean. Every time I see her, they're so clean and they're so, Precise. everything is, yeah, well, Executed, executed you know like this this like sometimes like the 10 percent of polish that just <laughs> makes it perfect or like just really nice yeah and how clean it is yeah yeah so yeah. every time i i learn more i appreciate lisette's work and how structured she processes her all her experiments are well, i yeah. guess that's where my my back my architectural background comes in yes. yes i've been handling the the knife i guess all my life Wow. <laughs> since, yes, since, since I, I started uh, the university and since day one, you get a knife on your hand and start making mock-ups. Yes, yes, and it has to be perfect. Uh, clean. How do you use Clean, yes. Mm. And structured and not that fragile that you can handle it. Yeah. Mm. And simple, right? It has to be simplified. Yes. All the forms. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I start seeing things in my head and then and then do it. Hmm? Yeah. So Lisette actually designed buildings, I hear, <laughs> in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Fun to see what the buildings look like now. <laughs> yeah. So so beautiful. Do you want to show us some of the sneaks from your what yes, you Let me show you. Yeah, I was quite excited to see the sneaks. Marina, you just, if, if you see I'm, I'm giving too much away, just tell me. <laughs> she, she Everybody, yeah, Everybody I, I, I'm, I'm not a person that, yeah, that it, I don't like too much surprises. <laughs> surprises can be, no. you know, so I prefer, prefer to be prepared rather than have surprises. <laughs> so actually, I'm not a person that will, I don't know, hide things from others. I think sharing is the most important thing. Yeah, I love Oh, that's that. great. Yeah. Okay, so these are my first studies of color. I decided I wanted to work with color and started making... Um, so these are the colors. Trials. Well, I've, I've changed. These are not the colors. So you're going to see things that are um, experiments and... And then, well, this this is I haven't worked that much with color. This is some, some things we have to, I have to develop more because it, on the on the way we new idea new ideas came and I started diverging with the with that those ideas. This is my first trials of calligraphy, trying to to have um, a calligraphy of my own. Experimenting with paper cutting. Fine, my you see. Look at yes. the, the fineness of the in-between parts. I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mine crazy. always break. Yeah, mine always break. <laughs> oh, mine too. Mine too, but you can tell. <laughs> you can see here is a, I guess I just gesso here trying to work on canvas, but I haven't succeeded on, on that. This is some uh, trying to find my own calligraphy. You were developing your alphabet, was it? Yes, I am develop I was developing my alphabet and, and here I was trying to because our theme is garden, I was trying to to make the letters look like uh, plants. I don't know how do you say when they hang ivies? Yeah. Vine? Like vines. Vine. Like vines? Yes. Vine. What, what like was vines. the tool that you used to write these? I used a color pen. I'm in love with the color pen. Actually, the moment I saw this, I fell in love with the color pen too. I decided to make my own and do it. <laughs> it's all a set. It's all a set. So. Wow. <laughs> so this, is, this is the first the first draft of one of the projects. I have two that are on their way and 
two more that I, I am still working on. Can you and, show uh, your, later on, can you show us your pen? Just curious. Yes. Did you make yes. it? No, I can show it. Yes. No, I make it. You made it. I make oh, it, and I've, I've broken a. I've worked. I have broken a few. Oh. Yes, I can broke. I have broken a few. Can you see here? Well, the thing is that the cola pen is very delicate in a way. It's so flexible, yes. which is wonderful. But at, but at some point it will break, and and it it won't work anymore. So. That's why they are doing the lutis. Uh, the lutis work better for me, but it depends on every calligrapher. Some people want a, 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 a stronger These are the lutis. Yes. Others prefer the the weaker, but which is much more flexible. That's the main difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. So this is the first draft, and. Um, we started with a, we, we chose a text and we started working with a text that is here in my garden. Um, there is a large place for sentiment. My garden of flowers is also my garden of thoughts and dreams. The dreams are as good, um, I can read my own letter. <laughs> the, the dreams are, uh, uh, and the thoughts are as beautiful. But here I started, um, we started uh, answering questions about what gardens means to us. And garden for me, and the gardens remember of my mother. So here I started working on a personal garden and uh, started having, started, I started writing like this. And here's some, a conversation with my mother. My mother passed away years ago. And I developed this thinking of the family, you know, the group of family, and then each one of the individuals and having thoughts and writing. I don't know what, what I was writing here. I can read it, but there are words here. And there are sentiment. And it was a very, very um, emotional process doing this piece. And this has morphed into something with, with color. And as I started, yeah, it should be here. Very nice. Those are here. Those are here. And I started working uh, only with green, and Marina suggested to use more color. And it has come to this. Let's see. There are hidden words here. I'm not gonna tell you where the where the words are. <laughs> and this is part of the of the vines I try to make. And also cutting them. Wow. <laughs> Goodness. You can see in the background. So with this, um, I am working on 3D. I'm not showing you what I'm doing on 3D. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Okay. Yes. Well, you can see on the on the photo of the of the of this yeah. meeting. Uh, yes. Yes. Part of the three D here. Right. I see. And these are some things. I there are words here also. It's made with balsa wood. Balsa wood. Okay. Yes, balsa wood like this. Oh. And um, well, nothing. Yes, and, that, and that's it. Wow, and that's it. Those, those are all my drafts. Nice. Well, not all, but not some of them. Some of them. So yes. not everyone can see what I mean by very methodical experiments, right? It's just, it's just they're, they're just so neat, even in experiments, even in the way <laughs> she explores each one and she does variations. I'm like, they're so neat. <laughs> I'm and then I'm all a place of like <laughs> well that's her personality look at her nails that's her personality you have to reflect <laughs> your personality that's the, whatever it is yeah that's why right. <laughs> yeah, thank you okay, and yours I'm ashamed to show it's, my it's, it's terrible yes but uh, it's curious it's curious you you I haven't been aware of that until they until you two talk about it 
It's true yeah, because my but... process is very different from yours, right? So it's the first yes. thing I noticed. <laughs> and and but mine is... Hmm? Yours is also very organized. I mean, you, you do explore a lot, yes. but then you try to organize it into like, uh, you know, your book, your that. Yes, volume. and Judith, Judith does, <laughs> Judith does um, an awesome work for our group. She keeps track of everything. She writes, writes down everything. Yes. I try. Thank you. The Thank you, Judith. After our meeting. So yes. when the meeting is over, the next day or may, maybe the same day she will deliver the summary of what was what did we talk about in that meeting Secretary. that is gorgeous i thought it's something you have learned in school because dorothy you do the same or... <laughs> <laughs> could be our singaporean culture it, it was something like i learned to... in work yeah yeah, yeah at work yeah it's true <laughs> like, yeah we, we do have to do that well, it's something really good you you're capable of going through let's say a two hours talk and make a summary of a page and see what was the important things we said and what was the don't speak about the nonsense or about <laughs> the, the 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 laughing uh, but it, it's wonderful because yeah. you have a good idea of where where, where are you yeah in this in this trip yeah, yeah. and i i think it's it's um, it's wonderful to keep track. It, well, track keeping track is the process. <laughs> yeah, so true. that's why I think it's so interesting. Uh... Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Because I think I I do I think very well in words, whereas I think for Lisette, from the moment I see her works, right, it's always very structured. It's like oh, there's a there's a sequence to things. There's a step to the way she explores different things. So like even the way we think, the way we organize our experiments, mine will be just like, oh, I have an idea, I'll just dash it out and I'll work out something. Whereas hers is always on very good paper, very neat. To try something, oh, let's try something else, let's try something else. Add one more, one more, one more. And that actually really is very inspiring because it there's a process, there's a progression. Whereas for mine, because I keep hopping back and forth between so many ideas. So as Marina's like, okay, do this. Stop. Okay, continue the previous one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, oh, interesting. But that is the fun thing that you are different. If you were the same, it would be boring. And you are you are like inspiring the other one. That's the best thing. Yes, definitely. Because one is more like like you said. Uh, she's more organized. She does less, in a way. Because uh, Lee said maybe yes. she she's uh, slower or it's it. slower. It's different. It's like Deliberate, yeah. organizing her work in a different way. But she's building. She's an architect. Remember her background. <laughs> yes. so has, well, the I guess that's why I have I have the ideas. Yes, I have the ideas going on my mind, and I don't. You need put, yes. yes you need I don't put my it. hands on on paper. Before I, you don't I'm have it right I, here. I get insults on my yes. yes. Well, that's the that's because you're an architect. In a way, it's very easy to understand that way of thinking because you've been raised like that way, and you have to be sure that the abasement is really secure to start building upwards because you know what would happen if you if your basement is not secure, everything will fall down. And while while Judith has a totally different personality, she's like 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 a little butterfly going all over the place, yeah. and she <laughs> from here and from there, and she everything is interesting, everything is fun, everything is like like surprising. Uh, that's wonderful. That's another. She she's more like a child rather than a grown up, <laughs> but that is what she has on her work. Yeah. In, in so, graphic design, we are taught. I like, want to ask you. Sorry, I want to ask Lisette about the mentoring process because you have taken classes with uh, Marina. You've taken two, two, two of her classes. Yes, so, I've taken. I have taken two workshops with her. Yeah. So the empty space one and the blossoms one. Um, yes. But then now you've undergone like a few months of mentoring. So so I mean, while we are talking about this, I see that Marina really understands you and understands Judith very well. And and as an educator, I think that this is so important, right? To to know your students personally. 
So I'd like to know from you, how has it been different uh, being mentored versus attending a workshop? Well, uh, on the workshop, um, you didn't have time to, to, the, to, to have a process, you know, because it's um, generally one time a week. Um, and you, well, you don't, I guess you're doing calligraphy, but you're not expressing yourself on a project like, okay. like we are doing here. You know, because we are conveying emotions in our calligraphy. Uh, our projects have uh, a, a theme. It's the same thing for Judith and I, but we have different approaches, different yes. feelings, different things we want to say on the on the pieces we are making. And being in the mentoring uh, gave us the chance to to exchange. Uh, ideas with Marina and with Judith. And we have, when we have, we have technical issues, uh, we go to Marina and ask how we can do this, or maybe she suggests another way of, of doing things. And I guess that's the main difference, that you can go on a long process. And I've learned how to to let go because you know I'm so I, I always try to do the the perfect things and not making mistakes and I think I've learned to to, to learn from my, my mistakes or give another try to the mistake and make something of it. I'm yeah. very happy with the process and, and yeah. for having this these meetings with Marina and with you this. Yeah, I noticed that um, because we, we were talking about how Judith is very different and then Lisa is very different, and yet um, Marina is able to mentor and give input without making you like the same, you know what I mean? So so the way that you express is very different from Judith, and I, I so appreciate this about Marina, uh, that there is, there is that guiding without, you know, making you like, the same, the same. So yeah, the expression is so different. Marina, you want to add something to that? Yeah, uh, 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 probably that is because of the theme I teach. I don't have a model that people will have to copy and make it as perfect as, as they can to the model. I, I teach a way of thinking or I don't teach. I just share a way of thinking uh, or the way Probably because of my background, uh, I have a background as an artist, but then I went into the graphic design field and then, then I did uh, editorial and graphic design and even typography. So that knowledge about the, uh, about the graphic design uh, taught me how to create a step-by-step -step process. So probably the combination of these two things uh, I'm I, I'm applying those to calligraphy, and and since I'm not teaching from a model, I just want people to find their own ways. So it's really easy to uh, to share an idea and see what other people can do with that, and you are open because you want to know what they can do based on their own backgrounds. Yeah, and because that would be the the enriching thing, let's say. If they were trying to copy me, it would be too boring because perhaps they will achieve something that is exactly like mine. But what would be the, 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 the result of that? It's, it has no sense at all. At least from my point of view, I want to interact. I want to exchange. I want the energy to be moving all the time. And the only way that energy will move is that it has, uh, it has a feedback. It, cut, it goes back and forth. And in that way, we all learn. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I appreciate the mentoring. Uh, and I found out it's so fun. I, I actually would like to have bigger groups because uh, 
I, I, I had the possibility of having several students and I think it did work. Don't you think, Lisette, when we were, everybody learns from the others. It's yes. not just- The first uh, workshop we did, I did with you, we were, we were 10, 10. Yeah, 10, we right? were 10 people. 10 yes. or 12, I, I can't remember yes, exactly. 10 people, I think. Yes, but it, and it was I very can, nice. Uh, I can see right now that after putting up this video, there will be a lot of people knocking on my door saying, I want to be mentored. <laughs> Marina says she can take a bigger group. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I think that everybody has a different background. Everybody has a different story. Everybody comes with, with, with a lot of things that are part of your life. And when making art, you have to put all those things up out there. And I, I'm, I'm just trying to make people feel comfortable and know what they lack and what they already have and what they have to start learning or searching or that's me as well. I don't know how to do paper cutting, but I learned from Lisette. Uh, and I, now I enjoy doing paper cutting, although it is so <laughs> time consuming. Oh, I'm I'm such a, I like everything. <laughs> Yeah, and like, and like everything, you have to devote time. You have yeah. to put your, your, your back on the seat. You have to do the work. And that is, that's, that you can't, that there's, there's no shortcut for that. You have to do the work, but, um, but it's different when you're doing the work because you're inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it, it's like like flow, you know. Yeah. When everything uh, falls in place and and everything, it seems like like effortless, but it's not. You know that it's not because you've been working like crazy for years and you have developed a technique. And technique, it's not when you when you manage technique. Technique is not um, a barrier. It's not uh, on the way. It's the way. Yeah. It's the it's way like to compare your ideas, your emotions, your whatever you have on your brain or on your heart. Yeah. I, think that I just want I to ask, sorry, sorry. I want to ask, you know, just now you were showing us, you know, the, the pieces that you did, you mentioned about that you, uh, you lost your mom uh, some years ago, and then you had this conversation with her in your art. And then um, I, I, I heard you saying that it was a very emotional process. So did you was did you find that difficult? I mean to try to put it out there on the paper, you know, to connect with your emotions and then make it so visible. Was that hard? Um no, 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 it wasn't hard. I guess I haven't thought about it, about um, putting emotion on my work. I learned that from Marina. And no, it, it, it came naturally. Once we talk about it, once we, we had our share uh, in our we meetings. We had therapy. <laughs> once we had therapy. Yes, yes. What, it, therapy. Once we, <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It came naturally. It came naturally doing that and, and having a conversation and, and writing those words down. Yes. Because I, I could see immediately that there was there was feeling in those images and the flow. Somehow I felt that I felt the emotion. I felt that those those images it meant something and it came from your heart. I mean I, I don't know how I no, felt I'm it. Glad. I, did. I did, yeah. So it's That's wonderful. wonderful because you you got the emotion. You can't yeah. read a word. Even yeah. she doesn't she can't read her own words <laughs> with her own writing. <laughs> But that's the wonderful thing. It's it the act of writing and the emotion you are going through while doing the writing that it was you that is that is what you can uh, convey uh, through your art. And maybe hopefully the the audience or the viewer will be able to feel that. Yeah. Even if you can't read a word. Yeah. And uh, and you can see, at least you can see it in all thoughts of, 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 of art and, and calligraphy from other cultures where you can't read a word, but you still have an emotion towards the, 
the writing or the signs or the characters or whatever. And, yeah. and abstract painting is about that. You can't see a thing. It's a white canvas. And why some people are crying in front of a white canvas? You can say, are they crazy? No, they, who knows what is going on through their minds, but that's wonderful. Yeah, Judith, I cut you off a couple of times. Do you wanna- Actually, at the same this? point. Um, they were saying about the same, they were talking about the emotion as well as the technique, right? And I think the breakthrough that, I think there was a slight breakthrough in between when Marina mentioned that it's up to us to choose what we want to reveal and what can be hidden as well. Because in expressive calligraphy, I mean, calligraphy, we're always taught, okay, legibility is a key thing, conformity is a key thing. But when Marina was talking about the emotive quality and being able to express yourself without regard for legibility or choosing what you want to reveal, choosing the stories, choosing the emotion you want to reveal, personally, I felt that was quite important. I think for Lisette also, I think halfway through when she started writing like, when you start writing something personal, the, the writing just changed. It changed with your tool. It changed with the stories you were trying to tell as well. You know, that, that came through in your experiments when you, when you talk about it as well. You know, there's that, that, that little spark. And sometimes you'll be like, this is what I'm talking about. This is the story I'm trying to tell. And we can feel it, you know, the work just speaks. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Do the rest uh, uh, in the room have any questions for Lisette or Marina or Julie or comments? We'd love to hear from you. Tony, yes, please. Uh, no, no questions, but um, just really to say how interesting it is and how inspirational, actually, as a, uh, a, a person who's not a calligrapher, um, basically because I've always been criticised you know about how bad my calligraphy is in you no know in, no but in those <laughs> days <laughs> yeah why um, because, because my o's are not always the same shape my letter o uh, it's not always perfect well, you're human <laughs> wow well, you're not a machine. you're yeah. not a fault <laughs> okay but i was taught by somebody who produces calligraphy old school you know, an old school calligrapher who thinks that it should all be perfect. So it's all, it's very interesting to me to hear about this kind of, you know, what, choose what you reveal. You know, that's fascinating because that was never the way that I was taught or not taught because I ran away. But, yeah, you know, it's an interesting way of looking at calligraphy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I can geld, but I can't write a, a row of perfect letters, or at least I can see, I can see what's wrong in the letters. I can see that they're not perfect. So I'm very well trained to know that they're not very good. But it's a whole different, this is a whole different world um, of calligraphic art. Um, and then paper cutting is a whole different level. And already my mind is going, oh, well, I could do this and I could do that. A bit like Judith. I'm turning into a Judith. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highest compliment. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I could cut some of it. I could add some gold. I could. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So um, just really to say um, thank you for sharing, Lizette, um, and for thank Judith you, last time. Fascinating, really. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, whole new world. Yes, Thank because... you, Tony. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Can't wait for the exhibition. Can't wait <laughs> to see what you've produced. Yeah. Once you start thinking, oh, there's this surface and there's like several layers and then like all these dimensions, it's like, whoa, whole yeah. new possibilities. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we're going to see, Tony, your next adventure will be gilded architectural paper cutting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've with, calligraphy. with calligraphy, <laughs> with calligraphy, with <laughs> But I've designed it in my head while I've been watching Lizette. <laughs> wow. Wow. I have no process, so I don't write. I don't make nice drawings like you do, Lizette. I have no foundation. <laughs> I just make it all up in my head and then um, create it. Well, this this is where it all happens. You're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really interesting.
Wonderful. Thank Nick, you. Do you have anything that you want to ask or say or add to the conversation? Are you able to? Oh, I see your mic is not working. Yeah, her audio is not set up. Mm. Okay, you can type in chat though. But uh, if you want to. And also, uh, is there a cat's tail? I see. I'm sorry, but yes, there's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he's moving around. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Who has a cat? Oh, Nick. Nick has a cat. Yeah. Nick. Oh, are you are you typing in chat? Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're all staring. <laughs> oh, she, she says she thought today's session is very inspirational too. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Nick. Inspirational. Wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, we're all looking forward to the exhibition and then you are keeping us all excited to see <laughs> what is going to come. And uh, maybe I just want to uh, uh, say that, you know, this this whole mentor, uh, what is that? This is so different from our group's direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't quite settled on it. For my group, we are going like more on a traditional calligraphy route, but we are trying to find our own expression, uh, different ways to, to, to incorporate calligraphy with our, our life stories and so on. So it's still in the process, yeah. Actually, yeah, so I, I just wanted to say that um, for Marina, your group, it's, it's so wonderful to see the chemistry, you know, and I think that so much of uh, the energy is uh, it's just so beautiful because you are all playing off of each other's strengths and you are um, you are you are recognizing each other and and appreciating each other and I think that this speaks um, it speaks to so much of what I think a good mentoring uh, not good but but a, a, a healthy mentoring uh, relationship and a, a group can be. Uh, so inspirational and and really so um, encouraging, right? I think yeah. it's also about yeah. having a safe space to play, right? I mean, as long as you have a safe space to discuss your ideas, whether it's to play, whether it's discuss ideas, whether it's to, Alamak, please help troubleshoot all my ideas, please, please help with this technical difficulty. When you feel safe, you share, and everybody gets infected and we just get excited together, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm sure you're saying going yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So something that Marina said to uh, you know in our in the mentors meeting was that uh, she refrains from judging. So I, I I gather you know Marina when you say that you mean judging in like a negative way, but then she does give very accurate critique. Right? Judith was telling me that you know, Marina's uh, critiques are very, very accurate. And somehow, Marina, you're able to understand uh, where they are at in terms of skill or their direction. So when you give your comments, uh, it is always very, it builds them up and it doesn't tear down or, or discourage them. So I do, I do see that it is very, um, it's very wonderful. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, so thank you guys thank you. For, for doing this and for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that any, any I've been other? trained, I've learned a lot from Thomas Zigmeyer. He he's just like that. When when giving feedback to uh, his students, I I I I follow him around the class, like watching what is he doing, what is he saying to the students. Let's say you, you see a student that I would say, when did this lady thought she could do calligraphy? What was on her mind? Some people have never hold a pencil on their lives and they are going into a, a calligraphic experimental workshop and say, what is he gonna say? Because I can't find anything to say positive. Let's, that's happened sometimes. And so I would still say, I would ask him permission if I could, follow him around the class and see what, he, what is he saying to the student. And he will always find something to grab from. Yeah, it was something, at least one letter or the tool or whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe I, I understood what he was talking about. And from pulling that only string, 
something good come up, came out. And he would even say to me by the end of the class, wow, you didn't know that was going to happen. And I would say, you didn't know either. Yes. <laughs> he would say that. It was fun. We were having fun because uh, in some way, uh, he had the, the, the perfect words to say to a student and to pull the best of, of, of her out. So I learned from him as well. And I also learned from my background as an artist. And I've been, uh, I've been unhappy and I've been, it's not the word unhappy, it's uh, how do you say this? Um, discouraged for not being perfect, for not having all my letters perfectly, the same shape, all rounded. <laughs> and and for spending a lot of time, uh, not spending a lot of time, having spent a lot of time not doing calligraphy, not finding calligraphy late in my life, because I found calligraphy uh, around my thirties, or or yeah, more or less. And 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 then I said I can't deny my background in arts, so. If I want to have perfect writing, then I use a font. <laughs> I was a teacher on typography. I know fonts are perfect. Herman Saft has fonts. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I want Herman Saft, I can have it. I can type it with a computer. Why do I manage to do something like Herman Saft if there was only one Herman Saft? Yeah. So what's the, the use of copying somebody? There's only one Brody, there's only one Eve, there's only one G Georgia Diva, there's only one. And I can keep on going all my life, like uh, showing you who's the only one or the first one. There's no use for any, everybody else doing the same. The use is finding your own voice and saying what you have to say and say it in the way you want to say it. And also, uh, like, Kash Tanahasi says, you have to be brave to say whatever you want to say. Because with your perfection and your imperfection, that is what you are. And of course, you will have people that would love what you do. And then there will be people that will don't even see you, don't even care about what you do, or they even see, think that you do wrong. But that's the world. You won't, mm. uh, you won't have everybody in love with you. And it would be too much to have too many people in love with you. You would be <laughs> like suffocating. <laughs> so yeah. it's that quickering, that energy that, that, that Martha Graham is always talking about, that, that, that blessing you have, but, uh, but that kind of... Uh, it's unsatisfaction in a way that makes you keep on going and gives you the energy of keep on trying to figure out what will be your next step. What am I going to do? What am I going to try now? But, um, and uh, I try not never, not to never fall on your comfort zone. You're good on this. Everybody knows you about, and, and everybody loves this type of work you do. So just you're done. You have to do that work for the rest of your life. You can't try something totally different because people are expecting. Uh, I have students that are advanced teachers that would come to me uh, because they are blocked and they are, they are they have panic. They are so um, so frightened of going forward because they are already very knowledgeable. On, the, on their place, on the place where they are. They are very highly recognized uh, internationally. And so they think people expect that level or that, that, that I don't know, that expertise with everything. So they are, they are scared to death. They can't do a, a, anything out of that because they have all the eyes of the world on them. They think they have all the eyes of the world on them. And, and so I just try to 
push them out of their comfort zone and I try just to for them to understand how important is being yourself. Even if you're messy, that's okay. You're messy. It's your election. Because if you weren't happy with that, then you would do something to change it. Or if you're a perfectionist, that's okay. If you accept it, you yourself, that's wonderful. And that is what Karsten Hashi says, that Eastern people, I don't know, they have a way of finding themselves in just one stroke of one stroke of a line, like by drawing in a, a stroke, a, a line, all your personality is out there. But it's not important how unique, how original, how different, how crazy that line is. That line must be honest. That is what it's important. That, that line, it's you. And for doing that line, you have to be courageous. That is what he said. And I think he's totally true. He's totally, he's so honest. Uh, and and there's one thing, right? Like, even the lines that Lisa and I have been making from the start till now, I think they've been very different. You know, like, Lisa has always been very careful, very neat. And then to see her write in words that are illegible, but so expressive. And for me, I've always been like a bit of a wild horse in which I'll just write everything. <laughs> that, that's how I experiment when I experiment. But towards the end, I started thinking, oh, there is very much beauty. There's a lot of beauty in very classical forms and ex turning the expectations on them too. You know? So throughout the process, even the lines we make, the stories we're trying to tell, how we tell them are very different through this process. Just for talking out by learning from so many great people around us through right, this journey. Well, that's the wonderful thing also about this period. Like I know uh, Lisette was taking John Stevens' workshop. So she was ach achieving uh, a skill by knowing the rules. When you know the rules, it's easier to break them. When you don't know the rules, it's like, like, like being on a blind place, like going blind because you're doing things, but you do, really don't know what you're doing because you don't have a solid background. So I really appreciate that that said and you did have a background. I'm not working with with uh, starting from scratch. They have a solid background in lots of things. Maybe they are not aware they, that they can blend and weave the different things they know to produce some other thing. But I think it's, um, it would be totally different if they didn't have a background. At least in my way of thinking, uh, most of the things I, I talk about, they would not even understand what I'm talking about. And they do because uh, they have built uh, knowledge in different ways, because th both of them are different, but they have built a knowledge and that sk those skills allow them to express. Yeah. So the, the technique is not getting on the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, when she wants, when Judith wants to do perfect letters, the, the letters, the perfect letters are there. And when uh, Lisette wants to be legible, Legibility could be there, I know, and the other way around. But is that what they want to do? That's always the question. That's wonderful. So for me, uh, a background, a solid background, it's really very important to yeah. free yourself yeah. and to be able to communicate in other levels. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, and I'm learning a lot of them from them. So, and from all these, uh, uh, from all this experience, and I think that is also important that the mentors enjoy, have fun, and they learn as well. Uh, it has to be uh, like a cold run. Everybody's learning and everybody's a part of the experiment. Yes. Because if not, it's, uh, it's too much kind of demanding uh, if you are not learning. It has yeah. to be an exchange, definitely. Yeah. That's right. Actually, when I when I try to put uh, mentors and mentees together, this is one of the considerations 
it's a bit like matchmaking because I have to see what would be a good match in terms of the chemistry or the direction. So Marina, of course, is very, you know, you have graphics, you have uh, so many years of teaching, you have uh, uh, art, and then, you know, so, so I felt that that and typography and that there's just so much that you, you, you are pulling together. So when I saw Lisette and the works that she did and how she is trying to combine different media, combine different disciplines, I felt that there was something there that could be a match. Uh, and also for Judith, you know, her background in uh, uh, science, <laughs> you know, from being <laughs> science, you know, she studied in science and then later, you know, with typography and then, yeah, so I, I, I kind of felt that it, it's interesting to see how when we bring uh, the, you know, together into a group, what, what, what will happen? Uh, and it, it wasn't just like, you know, okay, there's this person and the other person, let's just throw them together in the room. But I actually did think carefully about what could be a good, uh, uh, like a good match, you know, so I'm quite happy that it's, uh, it has come to something uh, good for all of us. So yay. I'm very, very excited to see, you know, the exhibition and what will come of it. So Lisa, any, any, any last words that you want to share before we yes. end? Yes, already to, to thank you for this uh, mentoring opportunity and a big, big thank to Judith and Marina for all the sharing. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Any last words, Tony? No, Nick, anything? And our I'm other looking guests? forward to see what you're going to do, Tony. <laughs> yes. It's a call to arms, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a totally the Bengal different. Bengal tiger. I'm looking forward to that. The Bengal tiger. We saw a sneak of it on your Instagram. And it's yeah, the but... one that's going to be emerald encrusted, right? Yeah, it is emerald encrusted, but the um, in my other life, <laughs> I um, <laughs> that is not neat and um, you know, perfect little gilded things. I do quite messy work, um, so messy, yeah, <laughs> um, much more expressive work. So it would be quite interesting to think about that, um, and how I might develop that. We'll see. Well, I'm looking forward to see those pieces of work at the exhibition, not only no, your pristine building. They won't be at the exhibition. The, the, the pristine work will be at the exhibition oh. and the, the messy work, is a, it's a different life. <laughs> um, you should find a way to put them together or weave yeah. them together because that's the coming, both coming. parts of you. Um, I think it's difficult because the... Um, it's difficult to be messy with illumination because it has to be planned. Yes. Um, so yes. I think they are different because, you know, there's no, you know, in, in calligraphy, and not that I can do it, but there is a kind of expressive line you can, you can throw yes. the ink about. You can't do that with gilding. It has to be pre-planned. So I think they are different. And we've had lots of conversations at home as to whether... Um, I should keep those two things quite separate and come to the conclusion in the end that they are they are separate things. Um, but who knows? I think the this sharing, you know, the meet the artists sessions have been so interesting for me. Um, so interesting to see other people's thought processes and what others are doing. Um, yeah, who knows what the future brings? <laughs> oh yeah. That's a good tease then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, we've come to the end of the hour. So I'm just going to say thank you to everyone for joining. And then those who are going to be watching on video, thank you. And uh, do look out for uh, the further sneaks. I guess Lisette is going to uh, give us further sneaks. And her IG handle is called Calligraphy Land. Is that right? Calligraphy Land. Yes, that's uh, right. And yeah, and then we will look forward to seeing you all in February for the exhibition and March. Mm. And also Marina is doing Empty Space Womb of Shape uh, workshop uh, hosted by the Art of Letters. So I will be your host for the workshop that Marina is <laughs> Yay, I'm looking forward to that. So thank you everyone and uh, have a okay. great day.
Have a great uh, weekend. Oh, no, not weekend. This is the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. I uh, lose track of my time. Thanks, everyone, for sharing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank thanks, you Dorothy. Thank you. Bye, Tony. Bye. Bye-bye. Recording. Yes. <laughs>